Good morning, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I'd go back to a basic element and answer the question of how do we compact a database? Why do we compact a database? Um, this is especially important for any novice MS Access user developer. Um, this is something, you know, that is to be used frequently, um, especially during the development process, so I thought I'd briefly touch upon it here today. As you can see on the screen, uh, Microsoft does have a page on the subject matter. You can, uh, you know, the link will be provided obviously below and you can peruse through it to your heart's content. Um, but I did want to point out a couple things. Even Microsoft themselves say to make a backup of the database before performing a compact and repair. Now, it isn't something that happens frequently. I will admit that, especially more so today than ever. But it does happen in certain rare exceptions that upon compaction, you actually corrupt the database. So just, you know, keep chances on your side to avoid the issue altogether. Just make a copy paste of the file. Even if you're automating a simple copy of the file quickly, do your compact and repair. And, you know, you, you have your safeguards in place to avoid any catastrophes. Um, the other things that they mention here, obviously, is to be able to perform a compact and repair, the database cannot be in use, okay? This isn't like many other uh, database systems that it can be done hot, as they say, or while it's in use. For access, you have to have an exclusive connection, which means you have to be the sole person in the database. No one else can be using it or connected to it. And then, obviously, they're talking about file permissions. Obviously, you have to have permissions on the file to be able to work with the file. It's pretty obvious. Um, anyway, and then they go into explaining different ways of doing it. They mention here automatically compacting a database by setting the option to compact on close. If you ask any, you know, knowledgeable MVP or database developer, they will all advise you never to do this. Okay, so do not do this. It is a very bad thing to do. And as I said, because database compaction can possibly potentially lead to corruption, this could lead to corruption as well. So you are better to control the compaction yourself and ensure that you have a backup being made than just enabling this to automatically happen every time the database is closed. Um, but then here they're going over how to manually do it. Then they talk about uh, a little bit later on uh, some of the reasons why you might want to do this. And the primary reason is it does a cleanup, okay? It's going to clean up the internals of the database. This in turn will normally reduce the size of the file itself and will also because it's cleaning up the guts of the database can have some performance impacts it can go from negligible to very pronounced uh, performance improvements it depends on all sorts of factors how much the database has been used how much it's bloated over time when the last time you did a compact you know so many factors here but I've seen miraculous changes in databases just from doing a compact and repair because one had never been done in years. Um, in other instances, you do a compact and repair and it really doesn't change anything because there are no real issues with that database. It didn't bloat. It was well designed. So the compact and repair has a lesser effect. But this is still something that needs to be done as part of maintenance of a, a proper database. Now, this isn't something you're doing daily, but this is something that, whether it's weekly, monthly, it needs to be done. And it all depends on usage and the way the database was developed. So I'm going to have the link to this article. It's still worth going through to get Microsoft's perspective. We're going to look at how we perform a compact and repair in just one moment. That said, I also want to point out a, a comment, a reply to a, a question in Stack from David Fenton. Now, this guy was a longtime Microsoft MVP, a brilliant person. And I think his answer is one of the best answers I've seen out there to try to explain a little bit as to what the compact and repair is doing behind the scenes in, you know, somewhat plain English terms. 
I'm going to provide the link, so don't worry. You can scroll through this and read it. But he's, he explains basically that the compact and repair is going to go through and get rid of all sorts of space. And it's going to optimize, uh, you know, uh, indexes into continuous data pages. Um, and he also explains a little bit as to how access sort of works. Uh, when you're doing things and performing updates, it doesn't actually necessarily overwrite the existing data. In a lot of cases, it's sort of uh, marking it as no longer active and then creating whatever your new entry is. But all that old data is still lagging there. And that's what causes this bloat over time. And then by doing the compact and repair, it gets rid of all of that stuff, updates the metadata, and it makes things into uh, continuous pages on the disks. And it's optimized as best it can and things along those lines. So I'm going to have the link. I really, really advise you to just, it's literally a, a what, a two minute read. Just peruse through it. It will bring you up to the level of understanding that you know a typical access user and developer should have when it comes to what compact actually does and that that's basically it so how do we perform a compact and repair well let's come here and create a new database and we can come in and it really doesn't make a difference let's just do an application parts okay so we've got a database now it's created for me tons of objects. Now let's really put things into context here. Let's go into database tools. We're going to split the database. So we have a properly set up split database, which is what you know we should have, even if you're a single user in a system. Um, so let's do that. So we now have a split database. I now have a front end and a back end. Now let's talk about compact and repair in a split system. The reality is bloating and what requires maintenance should be typically in a well-developed system, the back end, the tables with the data. That's where the bulk of the bloating and issues should be arising. I'm not saying that's always where it arises, it should be there. So when we're talking about compacting and repairing, what's important is to compact and repair the back end. So when I come into, let's say, the front end and I see I'm using link tables, it gives me not as much of a benefit to compact and repair the front end. I'm not saying there aren't times where you need to do it, but the front end should require a lot less maintenance, a lot less compact and repair. Um, than the back end. Um, and if your front end is bloating continuously upon use, well, that typically indicates to you that there are issues in your design of your front end. And then you need to look at why are things bloating in my front end? What, what is causing the bloat? And a lot of that comes down, you're going to have to do troubleshooting and testing to identify it's this form, it's this uh, VBA procedure, it's and try to identify what is causing the bloat in the front end, because it is abnormal for a front end to bloat substantially day after day after day. Um, there can be a little bit of initial bloat when you first release a new version, users use it a few times, there'll be a little bit of bloat. That's normal. But I'm talking, I, I've had clients where every time they use the front end, you see this bloat of, let's say, 25 megs, 50 megs, but every time. So that database grows and grows and grows and grows and gets bigger and bigger. And the next thing you know, you've got a front end that's running at 1.2 gigabytes when the original file was 35 megs. Um, and that causes slowdowns. It causes all sorts of things. Well, that's something that you have to identify as a symptom and then look into the root cause of what's causing that bloat. But getting back to compact and repair, the front end, it shouldn't need a lot of maintenance. It shouldn't need a lot of love and compact and repair. So typically what you have to do is we want to open the back end. So we're in here with the table itself or tables and then to compact and repair. Well, okay. In my case, if you're a developer like me, or someone that does a lot of database maintenance, it makes sense to add it to the quick access toolbar at the top. So that's what I did here. I added compact and repair because it's a command that I use frequently, especially as a developer. But for the normal person, you just go over here on your tabs to database tools and you select compact and repair database. You click it 
in a small database is instantaneous. For a larger database, down here in the right hand corner, you'll see the, the progress bar uh, indicating to you how you know the progress of the compaction is occurring. So you just press the button, let access do its thing, and eventually it pops back up as if nothing had ever changed. Uh, where you will see the change is when you uh, look at the file size. Um, so if you're really, really concerned, did it do anything? Um, well, look at Windows Explorer, look at the file size initially, perform your compact and repair, and then look at the file resulting file size, and you'll see the change. Like I say, it depends on so many factors. Sometimes the change is minimal. Other times it truly is remarkable. Not just the file size decrease, but the impact this can have on overall performance. Uh, for instance, I was just doing some development yesterday uh, with a, a procedure just doing some updates and I had a query to extract data and I had put a between dates value. So I was just trying to extract very specific date range of records and the query was fine and yet the data coming back was not it wasn't respecting my where clause my date boundaries that i had set i told it between 2000 and 2023 and yet i was still getting stuff in 1990 it made no sense a quick compact and repair and suddenly my query was working fine so sometimes when you're having abnormal behaviors when you're having like i say a query that isn't responding properly uh, the first thing you should be doing after obviously checking the query that it does make sense that you haven't made a mistake there for fundamental error in the SQL. But, you know, when you, you've got things that you know are accurate, do a quick compact and repair and that might put things back into working order. I think it's also important at this point in time to mention when you're doing a compact and repair, you shouldn't be doing this over a network. Okay, so you shouldn't be doing this from your PC over a connection and opening the database and performing a compact and repair. You should be copying the file locally to your PC on the local hard drive, performing the update, in this case, compact and repair, and then copying the file back over to the server. Okay, you're asking for trouble, you're asking for a potential corruption by performing compact and repair over a network. Now, that's a different thing if you're using something like remote desktop, team viewer, uh, you know, any of these remote access, then you're working locally on whatever computer, that's fine. But if you're on a computer connecting to a drive on a server, and so therefore working and passing all that data back and forth over the network, it's a bad idea. You want to always copy locally, perform the compact and repair, and then copy that file back over to the server once you're done doing your maintenance. And you'll also see by doing that a substantial improvement in performance on the compact and repair action itself, because it has to move all that data locally, do it, and then move it all back over, more or less doing what you do yourself manually, or what I'm recommending you do yourself manually, but typically doing so is much faster when you do it yourself. Um, I've had, I've tried to do compact and repairs myself. I've, I've made the mistake. I've done the bad things that you're not supposed to do like everyone else over a network and it was horrifically slow. And I mean, horrifically slow. And yet when I copied it locally, ran it and then copied it back, it was done within a couple of seconds. So just from a performance, wasting your time, it's makes much more sense. Just copy the file, do it, copy it back and you're done and you avoid that whole issue of more potential of corruption. I'll briefly mention, um, if you check my blog, um, for uh, command line switches, uh, here you go, MS Access command line switches. I also have a YouTube video. I'll find the link for that. Here you go. I have the video right there in my article. But you'll see you can even automate here compact there is a compact switch so if you wanted to automate this with a script to run it let's say nightly weekly monthly whatever you wanted on your server you could use a simple bat file vb script file you know even uh, using a powershell and you could execute the slash compact to do that just remember what i said if you're going to automate it, make sure the first step 
is performing a, co a copy of that file so you have a backup copy if ever the compact and repair corrupts the main file okay but just know that you can use something as simple as a command line to do and perform this maintenance routine on a regular semi-regular uh, basis and with that i think we've covered the bulk of uh you know ms access compact and repair um i'm pretty sure i have an example here somewhere yes right here here's an example of what you do to make it compact and repair as you can see you just supply the path and file name slash compact so it really is very simple to put into place um, as I mentioned, I, I'm going to say it again, please be careful. I highly advise you to stay away from compact and repair. I see this quite often. Lots of people put it in place. Don't do it. Okay. Remain in control of what happens with your database. Don't let access just take over and do things whenever it chooses. Whenever you close a database, you may be in for a nasty surprise one day. Um, so do it manually or script it, but make sure you do a backup first and you'll be sitting pretty. And as I said, if you see continual bloat in your database, well, then you need to look a little bit more closely at your programming, at your forms and things like that to identify why you're seeing continuous bloat. Um, a well-designed system shouldn't see continuous bloating and not substantial bloating. A little bit of bloating is normal. You'll see databases grow. That, that is somewhat normal. But when it's continuous every time you use it, every time you use a specific form, then you need to dig a little deeper. Anyway, I hope this has been informative. Thanks a lot for spending a couple of minutes of your day with me, and we will see you in the next one, guys. Have a great day. Take care. And as always, if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, your support is greatly appreciated. Take care.